Welcome back to the SparkFun Inventors Kit for LabVIEW tutorial series. I'm Sam Kristoff from LabVIEW Maker Hub, and in this example, we'll learn how to detect sounds using the SparkFun sound detector. I've connected digital pin 3 to the gate pin on the sound detector and also connected power and ground. The audio and envelope pins are left unconnected at this point. In LabVIEW, I'll click on Help and choose Find Examples. In Example Finder, I'll click Search and type links. Then I'll open the links digital read one channel BI. I'll close example finder. And in the serial port section, I'll choose COM3, which is attached to our redboard. The digital input channel is channel three. So I'll set that and then run the VI. Once LabVIEW establishes a connection with the redboard, you'll see the front panel LED indicator update as it detects sounds. There's also an LED on the sound detector itself that flashes when it detects sounds. Let's stop the VI and have a look at the code. I'll press Control E to bring up the block diagram and you'll see we establish a connection to the redboard, use the digital read one channel VI to read from the digital channel, which we pass in from outside the loop, in this case channel three, and that gives us a Boolean value, which we display in the front panel. Outside the loop, we close the connection and handle any errors. Let's update this code to toggle the value rather than just display the current value. You can think of this like a clap sensor for a light. When it detects a sound, it'll change states from off to on or on to off. To do this, we'll use a shift register to store the current value of our light. I'll right click on the edge of the while loop and choose add shift register. This will be a Boolean value, so I'll use quick drop to place a false constant. I'll press control space, type false, and press enter. I'll wire that into the shift register to initialize the value to false. Then we'll use a case structure to determine if we should toggle the value, if we've heard a sound. I'll move the digital read to the left to give us some more space, and I'll delete this wire. Then I'll place a case structure using quick drop, and I'll wire in the value we read from the redboard. If it's true, that means that we've detected a sound and we should toggle the value of our light. We can do this with a not primitive. Control space for quick drop and type not. We'll pass the value inside the case structure and into the not, and you'll see a tunnel was created for us. And then we'll pass the value out and into the shift register again. In the false case, this means we didn't detect a sound, and so we'll just pass the value through. After the case structure, we'll wire the DI value to our output. Let's switch to the front panel and run our VI. Now, when sounds are detected, the LED should toggle. Let's have a look. Think about how you could use sound in your next project. Maybe rather than just turning on and off an LED indicator, you could use it to control a real LED or even a lamp. You could also use the audio output to get a representation of the amplitude of the sound detected. You could display this information on a graph or maybe use it to control the brightness of an LED. Make sure to join us next time where we'll learn how to read the acceleration from an accelerometer. Make sure to check out labviewmakerhub.com for more tutorials and projects, and ask any questions you have on the MakerHub forums at labviewmakerhub.com forums.